of the head, the head and the neck. We're going to include the tongue in this. Uh, we have our label diagram here. But just so you can see, we're going to go through. So right up here in the front, conveniently enough, the frontalis. Amazing how that works. Over here to the side, we have the temporalis muscle. That's right here above the temporal bone. The next set of muscles that are important are these circular muscles, the orbicularis oculi. It's orbicularis because it has a round shape. It's oculi because it surrounds the eyes. It gives you the ability to blink. Between the orbicularis oculi, the muscle that we care about here in yellow, this is the nasalis. It gives you some movement in the lower part of your nose. We have some levators here. They're outlined in the light blue. The levator labi superioris on either side. These two muscles, uh, we're simplifying things. The little strip right here technically is the levator labi superioris alanche nasi, which if you think about it, makes sense. It's a levator. It's a lifter. Labi, lip. Superioris, it's above. And it's the one that's along the nose. Levator labi superioris alanche nasi. As opposed to the levator labi superioris, which is another lip lifter that's on the, it's superior to the lip. Well, does that mean that I have other muscles? Why, look, I do. I have depressor labi inferioris. They're inferior. They're below the mouth. And they depress or they would pull down. So I can lift my top lip, and I can lower my bottom lip. We have uh, zygomatic, they're flipped on your diagram and we've never changed that. The zygomatic minor is the thinner muscle, minor, smaller, major, bigger. Zygomatic major is the larger muscle. These are both also gonna pull on the top lip we have the masseter to the side right here. That's one of your main chewing muscles. It's going to close the jaw. The depressor anguli oris is a depressor, pulls down. It's anguli, it's to the side of the mouth. The orbicularis oris runs around the outside of the mouth and gives you some movement to your lips. We also have over here to the side both sides we have this deep muscle the buccinator so that the buccinator muscle actually you're closer to if you reach inside your mouth which you can't do in class because you're wearing a mask but when you get home or if you're watching this at home you can stick your finger in your mouth that's the buccinator it helps to give shape to the cheeks very important for whistling and for keeping you from biting the inside of your mouth when you're eating. So if we run through these on the blank screen, we have the frontalis. Let me get an arrow. A nice big Hanford purple arrow. Draw it in there. All right. So we have the frontalis. Off to the side here, we have the temporalis. We have the orbicularis oculi, the nasalis. These muscles on both sides are levator labi superioris. We have the zygomatic minor, the zygomatic major. The masseter runs along the side here. The buccinator is underneath on both sides. Again, zygomatic minor, zygomatic major, buccinator, temporalis on this side, the depressor anguli oris, the depressor labi inferioris, and then this muscle right up here in the front, this is the mentalis. This was the mental region. The mental foramen is a little hole right here in the mandible bone. So this is the mentalis muscle. We've taken out from this diagram a muscle that runs right across here that you'll see on the side view. Moving to the side view, 
We have a new word here. Our new word is aponeurosis. An aponeurosis is a sheet, a tendon sheet. So you don't actually have muscle right up here on the top of your head. This is the cranial aponeurosis. Well, but wait, it moves. Well, yeah, because it's being pulled on by the frontalis over here or the occipitalis in the back. In fact, in at least one of the textbooks, it refers to this whole thing as the occipitofrontalis muscle. We're breaking it up into, into two because it's easier that way. So we have the occipitalis in the back, we have the frontalis in the front, temporalis again on the side. So my temporalis muscle right here over the temporal bone. Orbicularis oculi is an old friend from before. We have our zygomatic muscles, the minor and then the major. Here's our rhizorius. Deep to the rhizorius is the buccinator. Uh, if I actually go in and outline the rhizorius here. You can see how it runs over the buccinator and the orbicularis oris around the mouth. The important thing here on the side, we have a better view of the masseter which is actually both of these muscles are parts of the masseter. And we have another friend here, the sternocleidomastoid, because it attaches to the sternum, the clavicle, and the mastoid process of the skull. Sternocleidomastoid is kind of important if you want to do things like turn your head, pull your head forward, all those processes. The last couple of muscles that we care about, we have to scroll a little bit. We have the platysma, which is a sheet of muscle along the front here. And we have the trapezius, which actually runs fairly far down the back and covers most of the upper back. It's the superficial muscle. There are other deeper muscles that have important roles that we'll get to as we move farther down the trunk next week. to go through and review. We have the frontalis, the temporalis, the occipitalis, and the cranial aponeurosis. The orbicularis oculi is old news. The zygomatic minor, zygomatic major, the buccinator, above the buccinator right here, the rhizorius, the orbicularis oris, these are both parts of the masseter. We have the sternocleidomastoid right here, the trapezius, and the platysma, which kind of looks like, if you look at it on the front, it kind of looks like the tail of a platypus. Insert bad Phineas and Ferb jokes here. Okay, so the other piece that we have is the muscles of the tongue. And we will get to those in just a second. 